tips to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today, or pick up one of the connection flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with founders more meaningful. Check out our website, mccla.org, and find us on Facebook. And join us in making Founders Metropolitan Community Church your one-stop spiritual portal. If this is your first Sunday at Founders, you are our guest, and we would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center and meet some new friends. We would love to hear your questions, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out the welcome tablets. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you are joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website and let us know that you are joining us. Founders Metropolitan Community Church is a place of diversity and welcome, a place of healing and acceptance, a place of deep spirituality and transformation, a place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles.
pray. Creator God, it is indeed a joy to come here together in community to worship you and to give you thanks for the many ways that you continue to bless us. We ask that in our time together that you give to us the presence of your Holy Spirit, that we may feel you moving within us and through us, reconnecting us in ways that we could never hope for or imagine. Creator God, when you created, you created all things good, and that included us. You said to us that you call us to do but one thing, and that is to love, to love in the way that you love us. Give us courage to be your loving presence here in this time and in our community, in our city, and in our world. In all your many names, amen. amen. Please be seated. Welcome. Welcome to worship at the Metropolitan Community Church at Founders Metropolitan Community Church. It is indeed a blessing to come here together in community to worship. If you are a first-time visitor, if you're relatively new to the community today, we ask that you uh, let us know that you're here. We have a, a, a gift, a flower to give to you, as well as a little information about our congregation. So if you're a first-time visitor, please raise your hand, let us know that you're here, and uh, our ushers will gather around and, and give you um, that information. For all those who are joining us online, we say welcome as well. It is indeed a blessing to know that as we worship here that we are joined by individuals literally from around the world. Thank you for tuning in and worshiping with us. We encourage you at some point during the worship service just to scroll down to the bottom of the screen where you're, brewing this, where you're viewing this broadcast and let us know that you worship with us. Uh, you can let us know what you think about our worship, as well as you can um, let us know if there are any prayers that we may hold in our hearts as we pray so that we can hold you um, together and support you spiritually throughout the world, wherever you are during the week. And for everybody who is here, thank you for gathering together that we may be community. I encourage you to rise as you're able to greet those who are near you and to let them know that they are in the right place this morning. seat, being in the spirit to receive our reading today from the gospel attributed to Matthew chapter 7 beginning at verse 1. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure, measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Mm. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches Minds. For everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. I 
gladly walk across the desert with no shoes upon my feet to share with you the last bite of bread I had to eat. I would swim out to save you in your sea of broken dreams when all your hopes are sinking. And how I loves me, love can't build a bridge between your heart and mine. Love can't build a bridge. Don't you think it's time? For love so loudly, every heart would understand that love and only love could join our hearts and hands. I would give my heart's desire so that you might see the first step is to realize that it all begins with you and me. Come on, me. join us. Love. can build a bridge, the only way that foundation gets laid is if we do it. If love can build a bridge, the only way that bridge gets built is if we take the time to defy everything that is holding us back and keeping us down. And that's why we've been going through this series called Defying Gravity. It is for us to let go of everything that has weighted us down and held us back. And today, it is indeed a celebration because... Um, Pastor Scott is going to give today's message, and he's going to do that because we as a community have been with him. He's been here for eight years. He's been on a journey, as many of you know, and I don't want to steal his thunder, but he has some news to announce to you about where he is on this journey towards ordination. Scott, please bless us with the word that God gives you today. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for allowing me to be here. 
it's always a wonderful opportunity to be able to give a speech or a lesson, a sermon, to be able to honor this craft, this craft that I hope to be able to earn an income with. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce that I'm no longer in care with the Universal Fellowship of the Metropolitan Community Churches because I've been approved for ordination once I receive a call. Thank you. As you can imagine, though, my mind is a flurry of questions of what is next. I have been in deeper prayer and contemplation of discovering the next steps of this journey. As of today, I do not have any answers, but the scripture is meant for me as a source of reflection. Ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks and everyone who searches finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. How can one get a job offer if an application is never received. Jesus teaches, Jesus teaches that we must first search before it's found. One must first knock before someone will answer. I am seeking guidance, asking questions, knocking on doors so that I will be recognized by the God-given talents that I have and hope for the privilege to serve. I know from first-hand experience asking for help is not easy. Some are we have been led to believe that asking for help is a weakness. However, I believe it's a strength because we know who we are and what we need. That means well-developed thought went into the process before asking. I have learned I must ask these hard questions in order to continue my relationship. How can a door be opened if no one knows you're there? Therefore, Jesus teaches us to knock. I have continued to volunteer at Los Angeles County USC Medical Center as a chaplain where I knock on many, many doors. Many in the, many in the hospital need housing, jobs, and security. The role of a chaplain is not to provide, but to explore. It is not easy to have answers for those who are asking, why me? Why did my daddy get shot? Or why does my innocent child have to suffer so much? I have to ask these difficult questions in order to help them to explore the answers. I have discovered it is always the journey and not the destination. The road to self-discovery is the answer to many in life's journey, including the journey with that walk with the divine. The road to self-discovery is the answer to many in life's journey. I have had the opportunity to meet all kinds of people by knocking on their doors, people from all around the world, all different religions, different walks of life, people who are homeless, people who are dying, people who are suffering people who are living on the margins of society. Sometimes I'm welcomed, and sometimes I am not. However, there are moments when I walk into a room and a person just begins to cry. Those are the moments and the minutes that I know I'm doing God's work that Jesus asks us to do. I have learned not to look at the chart, not to have any preconceived ideas prior to me walking into the room because I know I will prejudge them. I listen to their stories. I hear their pain. I try to see their heart as God hears them. Last week, I went into a room of a young 27-year-old straight gentleman. He obviously was athletic by his body build and accidentally shot himself in the foot. Well, two flags went up for me automatically. First, I'm terrified of guns and will always speak out against them. Second, I fear of walking and talking with straight men because of the lack of our commonality. <laughs> However, I committed a chaplaincy no-no. We talked for over an hour. 
we are taught in chaplaincy to look at all the surroundings. There were no cards or flowers. There was no obvious signs of any visitors. He was dressed well sitting in the chair next to the window with his leg propped up in the bed as he sat reading a book. Once I introduced myself, his eyes lit up as to say, welcome. He was in the time of crisis and he was reanalyzing his life. He was at a vulnerable moment of understanding and he, that what he wanted in his life. He wanted to improve his life and his future. He was trying to understand life's journey. He spoke of his current employment and told me the story how he was recently held at gunpoint while doing his job. He shared his hopes to marry his current girlfriend. He explained how her parents would not allow him to marry unless he got a college education. He was contemplating going to college and thought he was too old to return to college at the age of 27. <laughs> Well, who better to give a perspective on college than someone who just graduated in their 50s? He shared his dreams of having children. I asked him, what would you teach your children? Then we explored his spirituality, the real reason why I was there. As our discussion came to a close, I prayed with him. I prayed with the concerns on his heart, and as he was praying, he began to weep. I ask, why the tears? He said, God meant for us to meet today. Perhaps that is the reason I got shot in the, myself in the foot. Then he asked for a hug. This happened because I knocked on a door, reserved judgment, and asked questions. If I continued the behavior of my past, this would not have happened and a missed opportunity of a relationship would have occurred and a relationship with the presence of the divine. The best experiences in life is when we ha where we have been not judge and do not judge another person and listen to them from their perspective. Not only, a stand, not only understanding occurs, but then a relationship occurs. Can you imagine if we all learned this skill of a relationship, how our community would change? Our movie theme is based upon the Disney movie, Zootopia. Zootopia is a metropolitan city where all the animals live in harmony. Each district of the city is made of zones that makes living for the various creatures easier. However, a situation arises that causes chaos in this city. Sound familiar? Our main character in the story is Judy, a female rabbit who desires to be a police officer her entire life. Judy was always being judged for not being qualified for this position of work because of who she was. Judy needed someone to trust to work with her on her most important case. That ally become, became the most unlikely candidate, a fox. Judy had a horrible experience as a youth with a neighborhood fox. Judy was told her entire life, never, ever trust a fox. Judy and this fox learned from each other's perspectives and had a wonderful relationship develop. Brene Brown, our series inspiration, stated the following about judging. We're hard on each other because we're using each other as a launching pad of our own perceived deficiencies. I want to say that again. A launching pad out of our own perceived deficiencies. Brown's work discovers that building relationships and trust cannot have judgment. Judgment breaks down any kind of trust and understanding. Our scripture reading from Matthew is a part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Jesus intentionally states, do not judge. The commandment of Jesus is probably one of the hardest lessons that we all can live. Jesus is calling us to act with mercy, humility, and tolerance. 
three principles in which I believe we hold dear here at Founders. In so doing this, we care for one another. Jesus gives us this lesson as not to break, gives us this lesson not to break relationships, but gives us an opportunity to build a relationship and community. Judging is the opposite of forgiving. There have been some in the Christian community who continue to judge us and keep us divided and having a relationship with the divine. However, we have learned by knocking and asking those difficult questions, we have discovered we are a part of God's kingdom. We must do the hard work of knocking on those doors and asking questions. And that work is never, ever done. One of our most famous social justice leaders understands the role of judging. judging. When Martin Luther King said, I have a dream for my four little children, one day that will live in a nation that they may not be judged by the color of their skin, by the, but by the content of their character. I want to be judged by the content of my character. When I first walked into Founders Metropolitan Community Church over eight years ago, what I discovered was a place where we all were accepted for who we are. This was the beauty that I loved about Founders. It did not matter what clothes one wore, how one identified, the body size, or the skin color. This is the legacy I want to continue. I want to live my life looking at the heart of the person inside and not our outer shell that exists. Brothers and sisters, that is why we are Founders Metropolitan Community Church, and we need to continue this bequest more today than ever. We serve one another as community, united and not divided. The movie concludes with Judy giving the commencement speech at her next graduation class at the police academy. I'm going to reflect on those words as if it were my commencement speech here at Founders. <laughs> Real life is messy. We all have limitations. We all make mistakes, which means glass half full. We all have a lot in common. And the more we try to understand one another, the more exceptional each of us will be. But we have to try. So, matter, so no matter what type of person you are in the LGBTQIA spectrum, from the biggest queen to the first time visitor, <laughs> I implore you to try to make this church and a world a better place. Look inside of yourself and recognize the change starts with you. I want to be like Judy. I want to look at myself and no longer judge and build a better place. Once we stop judging one another and knocking on the doors of whom we do not know and truly asking questions, that allows us to know the other. We will again build our community, our tradition at Founders, and reestablish our middle name, Metropolitan Community Church. Amen.
glory of the one we sing. Who is it? It's Jesus. Jesus. Shine the light and let the whole world sing. We're singing for the glory of the one we sing. Please be seated. We have many ways to shine our light and to build that bridge of love. And one of the ways that we do that is by working with other organizations that are doing just amazing work in the world. And so um, we're delighted today. We have guests from an organization called Child Share. In a few minutes, they're going to come up here and explain how we as a congregation can be part of the solution. Child Share works to connect communities and individuals um, to supporting children through the foster care program. For some people, that may actually be fostering a child and becoming foster parents, and I know that there are many in this congregation who've actually already done that. There are other ways that a community such as ours can also support families and children in the program, and they're going to let us know ways that we can do that. Even if you don't feel moved or not at a place where you can actually foster a child, there are ways that collectively we can help to make that whole system work and run a little bit better with a little more love. But first I ask you to watch this really powerful and moving video. Child Share has impacted me greatly. Uh, it's benefited me by giving me a stable environment to go to when I need help. They also extend a helping hand to my parents. It gave me a new beginning. It basically gave me a fresh start to realize that somebody out there cared about me without even meeting me. So in doing, in, in receiving these things from child share and going to the different child share events, I was able to interact with people and meet different people that have impacted my life greatly and have, uh, for the better. I was put in foster care because of uh, my parents basically being unfit parents. The last foster home I was in, uh, went, there was a lady that was my foster mom. I don't have very fond memories of her or, or of living in her home. A lot of uh, abuse that went on there and just a lot of neglect. When I was about five years old. She got really irate with me. She was upset that I had peed on the new sheets that she had bought me. And that was like the first dose of abuse that I started to receive at that home. Then she sent me to school with those peed on pajamas. So I would see that as another form of abuse because of all the laughing and being picked on. There were plenty that were very positive foster homes that were more hands-on, that actually treated me as if I were their home. And there are wonderful people out there that are very dedicated to providing a home for a foster child. My adoptive parents, I met them at an adoption fair. There was this tall guy standing next to me and he offered to make me a plate. So when he off extended the offer, I took it. And that's what led me to meet my father and mother, Cheryl and Richard Leader. And uh, from there on, it was just fairy tale. And one of my fondest memories of child care would have to be receiving the uh, blanket that they gave us. And uh, they gave us a care package with it just said my name and it said toys. <laughs> and I had never had any uh, toys of my own. This tub of toys are mine. So it gave me a, a, a sense of uh, self relevance. Like I, I meant something to someone. People that are possibly potential uh, foster and adoptive parents, I just wanted to say that you're greatly appreciated for everything that you can provide, no matter how small it is or even how grand it may be. Those kind of things are what children need to help develop them. That's why even after all the homes I was in and all the bouncing around, I was still able to come out and be productive because somebody extended a welcoming hand and an open heart to receive me as their own. I would like to say thank you to all the Child Share members out there because it's, it's meant a lot to me. It's, it's changed my life for me and for my family members because it's just you brought us together and made us a family. Good afternoon, everyone. 
If we haven't already met yet, my name is Embe, and I am from an organization called Chowshire, just like the video you just watched. And we are a um, support and advocacy organization that um, supports families and finds homes for children in foster care. We have the potential um, to create many more stories like the one you just saw about Joseph Leader because there are 20,000 children in foster care in LA County. 20,000 children needing homes, 20,000 children needing love, 20,000 children needing to be acknowledged that they exist. Um, so if you are interested or thinking about or if the thought has crossed your mind about fostering or even supporting in any way, please stop by at the fellowship um, Hall and talk to me. There are many things and many ways that anybody in this room can plug in to be a part of the solution to what's happening in our community um, and what's happening in our in our state. And so, um, there. Are, uh, just to give you a couple ways, we can just like what Joseph Leader spoke about, about the wall delivery. A lot of kids are whisked from their homes on a moment's notice and there are not many personal items that they can grab. So what's really helpful when a kid is placed in a new home is a welcome gift basket that has very basic items, but they mean the world to the child because they no longer have those items. Um, a blanket, toothbrush, new underwear, um, things that you wouldn't even think of. Basic teddy bear, toys, um, are really helpful in the transition into a new home. We, we also have a program called Adopt a Family, where a family in your community um, is fostering, but they love a faith-based community just like you guys to come around them and help them with mowing the lawn, uh, fixing things around the house, or making a meal once a week. So there are, there are lots of different ways. And I've also spoken with a couple of uh, people, and uh, they've told me things that, um, well, I can't do it because of this. There are so many rumors about what you can do or you can't do with the limitations. So I'd love to chat with you about that as well. So come see me and I would love to chat with you. Thank you guys. So as I like to say every Sunday, I encourage you to stop down Fellowship Hall to uh, um, grab a snack, get a cup of coffee, some lemonade, um, say hi to some of the people who are in community so that we may be community not just in and at worship, but after worship as well. And this Sunday, we have an extra incentive. So I encourage you to stop down, talk to the great folk from, from Child Share, um, find out how we as a community can really make a difference in the lives of people. I mean, just in especially our children. Um, Y'all know that, that LGBTQ individuals in particular are, are a higher proportion of homeless youth and youth that find their way into the foster care families um, because um, of, of um, the discrimination that they face in their families of origin. And so um, here's a very practical way um, that we collectively can make a huge, huge difference. For those of you who are joining us online, again, I say thank you and welcome um, and for joining us for worship. Um, now would be a wonderful time to go and get the crackers, the bread, the juice, the wine, whatever it is that you would like to use for communion today. In a few minutes, we're going to be celebrating communion. We do celebrate an open table. It is open to everybody, wherever you are on your life or spiritual journey. And having the elements by you now will we'll ensure that when we consecrate the elements here, we can also consecrate the elements that you have um, next to you so that we can participate as one body um, connected virtually and spiritually wherever you may be on your journey. We have a lot of ways that we are making ministry happen here, and we have a lot of opportunities. And so if you have uh, a few minutes of your time, maybe an hour or so on a Friday afternoon, we have an urgent need for people to help out to receive the food that gets delivered each Friday between 11.30 and about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That is food that gets delivered to support our food pantry. 
Every Saturday, about 125 people receive vital nourishment because of the ministry that this congregation has. But to make that ministry happen, we need to have people who are available. And so if you're able to spend about an hour or so on Friday to receive the delivery and to help put away um, the frozen food in the freezer and the refrigerated food needs to be carried downstairs um, to the kitchen. So uh, it's not just about having time available. You also need to be able to help um, to move the boxes. Um, and, and to make that happen. We have a couple of people who've been able to help, um, but we need more. Also, our hospitality to make community happen after each of our worship services. We need people who will make the coffee and keep the snacks warm and put things out and make sure that things are clean and ready so that when we leave worship, we have that space. Um, so if hospitality is one of your gifts, um, don't have to do it every Sunday, but if you just did it once in a while, that would be wonderful. You can send an email to admin at mccla.org. You can talk to me or any of our worship service, uh, worship leaders following worship service. Just let us know, but it's, it's because we share our gifts and our time together, that's the way that ministry happens. A lot of other things that are happening in the life of the community. I encourage you to take your worship bulletin. It doubles as a newsletter. A couple of very important things that I'd like to point out. Every week we celebrate gems and volunteers and angels of the week. And this week we are celebrating our angel of the week, who is Rose Yeager. Rose. Rose and, and, and her wife Phoebe have been coming here ever since they moved in August of 2011, and so you're kind of celebrating a five-year anniversary, so congratulations, happy anniversary, um, and more recently they've been joined by a little one who's been worshiping with us not quite as long. Um, Rose serves on our board. Um, in the past, she's helped with women's spirituality as well as organize our young professionals group. And so, Rose, we thank you for all the many ways that you helped to make this ministry happen here. And so, thank you, thank you, thank you for serving. Phoebe, thank you for letting us borrow Rose. <laughs> I would also do a, a, like to do a special shout out. Um, Reverend Barber was our gem of the week last week. She was not here. And so Reverend Barber, thank you for all the ways that you minister as well. And, and this Wednesday, um, we're going to have a health fair. It's going to be running right along the street here. We are partnering with Very Human. Um, it's the organization that we introduced to you just last week. Um, Very Human is based here. We are acting as an incubator to get that social service organization up and running. Um, they do services um, to help many of the most vulnerable within our population. And so we're going to have a health fair, and there are going to be vans um, from various uh, universities and hospitals out here on the street, right on Prospect. It's going to be from 9 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, just stop on by, get the word out. Um, there's going to be um, a van there to check on your eyes, um, dentistry, um, testing for various STDs, a whole bunch of other healthcare services. Um, Very Human also acts as a navigator to connect people to vital human resources and vital services within our city and within the county. Um, so people who are looking for assistance for renting um, or needing assistance to get healthcare, um, come help get the word out. Um, but this is one of the ways that you are using all of our resources to make ministry happen, and it's happening right here from 9 to 3. We're expecting maybe upwards of 1,000 um, who are going to be right here. They're going to be using the facility on Wednesday, and so we're also looking for volunteers if you just want to be here to help make hospitality possible, to guide people around campus, to answer any questions. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to show the love, to be the light, and to build bridges. Founders MCC, I've heard a rumor, and that rumor is that we've got talent. Now, I'm looking to see if that rumor is true or not, and there are individuals here who I have to believe sing, write songs, do poetry, write scripts, whatever it is, if you've got talent to share, we're having a fundraiser and a fundraiser. It's going to be October 8th. It's going to be part of our anniversary celebrations. And if you've got, fun uh, uh, if you've got um, talent to share, I encourage you to check out the information in your worship bulletin or to see Mr. Fabulous following worship service. And, and to help get word out, um, we're looking to make that a fundraiser. We're going to open up the theater as well as Fellowship Hall. It is a wonderful opportunity for us to show the wonderful facility that we have. So, uh, so whether you come and share your talents or whether you actually um, just invite people to come, 
Um, not full, fully aware of all the details yet, um, but that information will be coming forward, but just know that that's happening. Um, also, we've got um, home groups that are being organized, and so if you're interested in that, I encourage you to check that out. Um, talk to Pastor Scott or Joel, who are helping to organize that. Um, we're looking for hosts and facilitators because we want to create more and more opportunities to make community happen here. I know that there are many here who are grieving the loss of... Um, Tony Rogers, um, his uh, funeral information has been announced. Um, there's going to be a viewing tomorrow evening in Riverside. Um, there'll also be a funeral and internment on Tuesday morning. If you want that information, please let me know. We also did include that information in our most recent email. Um, likewise, um, our community is saddened um, by the loss of longtime member um, Will Whitley, uh, Whiteley, who um, died, I'm told, on August 25th, on Thursday. Um, I do not have any, any details, but as soon as we get those details, um, we will let you know. And um, there are many of you who have asked how you can reach out, um, send a card or letter to Lisa, um, who's not able to be with us right now. And so if you're looking to connect with Lisa, please let me know um, after worship service. Um, I do have an address where you can actually send a card or letter um, to show your love and to show your support. I now ask that you give, and give in ways um, that you are abs, the ways that God is blessing you. This Sunday is the fourth Sunday, and we have um, two uh, offerings. There's going to be one that comes around. Um, that's our general offering. That goes to support all of the different vital ministries within the life of our congregation. And then there's a second offering, and that's in the basket up front. And we invite you to come forward as you feel called and moved. Um, that is the money that we use in order to help buy the food for the food pantry, um, the food and the, the bags for our, our brown bag ministry, um, for the quarters for our laundry love, all of those different services that we do in order to make ministry happen and really touch lives. Um, that's what those funds actually are used for. And so we ask that you give as you're able. Um, and then those of you who are, I'm, I'm, uh, Lucia has waved me down to, to remind me that um, if, you're looking, if you're looking to do something really creative, um, we're looking for, for a number of volunteers, as many as 20, to participate in a creative experience next Sunday following worship service. She says eight. Um, and so uh, hang around after our closing song and talk to Lucia um, for a way that you can actually participate in worship um, in a very creative way um, next Sunday. But please now give, the ushers are going to come around, but please give as God is blessing you that we may bless this world. God, just as you are.
Let us pray. Spirit of God, we give you thanks for the many ways that you continue to bless us. We ask that you bless these gifts so freely given, the gifts of our prayers and our presence, our passions, and truly of our treasure. We ask that you bless these gifts, that we may have the resources, so that we may touch the hearts, show your love, and that we may continue to bring your message of hope, bring your message of justice, to transform lives and transform our community, city, and our world. We ask all these things in your many names. Amen. So... We are going through many, many transitions and many transformations, some of which sometimes are planned and some of which, well, you know how that works. You plan and then all of a sudden God surprises you and that's what happens. And so um, many of you who are on our email list, you uh, received a special announcement that I sent out on Friday. Um, and I would like to just pause for a moment to acknowledge uh, that um, there are two board members who are stepping down for, for different reasons. Um, Chuck Phelan, who has served as our treasurer, um, has uh, since uh, since October of last year, um, has done an awful lot of work to help us um, get clarity about the ways that our our finances are organized. To think about the way that we are actually um, utilizing our financial resources and trying to be really really good stewards. Um, he's done a wonderful amount of work in terms of reorganizing um, all of those vital reports, so that not only does the board have a better understanding of what we have and where we're going, but also you'll see at our upcoming congregational meeting um, better ways to report back to you so that you also have clarity as well. And so Chuck, um, his father, your father is uh, um, facing some significant health issues as well as a number of other um, life situations are, are uh, occurring. And so um, Chuck at our last board meeting announced that he would be resigning from the board effective the end of this month, um, so later this week. And so I ask that you honor his gift of his time as well as his presence um, and his willingness to um, serve in this vital capacity. And so thank you, Chuck, so much for everything that you do. And Oyi, who has been on the board um, since the beginning of, of um, the year, Oyi is actually going to be stepping into the role um, as treasurer. And so um, Chuck has graciously agreed to stay on until the end of the month to help to make that transition happen. And so um, they are working very, very diligently to make that a, a smooth transition. And so if you see Oyi, please thank her as well for stepping into that. Um, and thank all of your board members um, for helping us to um, move through these transitions with hope and with grace. Um, just prior um, to our board meeting, I had actually had a conversation with Lee Frisk, and many of you know um, that last year, shortly after joining the board, um, Lee suffered a heart attack. Um, Lee has been serving as the vice moderator, has done a wonderful, wonderful job helping to navigate many of the transitions and the tumult that happened in the life of this congregation over the course of the last year, and it hasn't been easy, and sometimes it's been very, very stressful. And so just prior to the board meeting, I had had the conversation with, with um, Lee, and he was preparing to step down. Um, but then when Chuck um, said that he needed to step down as well, um, Lee said, you know what, I'm going to try to hold it together until um, the next congregational meeting. Um, but then um, he left worship early last Sunday. And when I checked in with him on Monday, um, the reason he left was because his heart was acting up again. Um, he had met with his cardiologist, the news is not good, and he urgently needs to de-stress. And I said, Lee, as much as we would love for you to have continued presence on the board, it's more important to us that you have extended and continued presence here on this earth. And so um, I said that it was better for him to step down and take care and de-stress, and so he too has agreed to step down. Um, I ask that you hold him in prayer, you hold Chuck's father in prayer, he is watching online. He got up this morning. He was intended to be here, um, but he wasn't feeling well. And I said, you need to take care of yourself first. So um, please clap loudly to honor his presence so that he can hear you.
And so our congregational meeting is October 16th, and so it's just about a month and a half away, and so the board is not going to fill these two um, seats at this time. Um, just doesn't make sense for us to do it with the, with the congregational meeting um, so close at hand. Um, there are a number of other changes that are happening. Um, we'll be updating you um, very, very soon. Um, but I also want to use this as an opportunity to um, say, you know what? Um, one of the things that the board has been very intent about, and we had a lot of conversation about it at the last board meeting, is as a board, the board's role needs to shift. We really need to focus on strategy, on governance, on managing risk, on finding the funding and the resources and being really, really good stewards with the resources that we have. Your board is really intent on being a strategic visionary board so that we have the vital resources that we need in order to move forward into the future. And so, um, the, the upcoming congregational meeting is happening. We're going to be having board elections. And so if you or somebody in the life of the congregation that you know um, has that kind of passion and vision, strategy, financial background, fundraising experience, um, those are the kind of people that we're going to need on the board. And so I encourage you to pray about that, to pray with them. Um, when the application comes out in the next week or no, uh, week or two, um, I encourage you to fill it out or encourage others to fill that out so that when it comes time for a congregational meeting, this congregation can choose the best possible candidates so that we have the strongest board possible. It's also an advertisement, October 16th, <laughs> congregational meeting. So uh, let's plan to come so that we can actually make it a joyful celebration as we move together into the future. Thank you. Um, we want to dedicate communion today to two people that we've lost. One would be Will, of course. Some of you don't know Will, um, but he's a long, long time member of MCCLA, now Founders. And these last few years, he hasn't come as often. But those of us who've been around a while, we know Will. We remember Will. I also want to dedicate this communion to Steve Sistestad, the first cousin of Jane, um, whose family is grieving his loss now. So if you will join your hearts with mine, we'll, br we'll bring all of this to the table today. God, today we come before you. We've heard your words through Scott about judgment, and I'm sure that hit all of our hearts because all of us here in this congregation have been full of judgment. I'll admit that. I think we could all bring that to your table. And this world is so full of judgment. Right now we're judging each other because we come from a different social group, we come from a different race, we are of a different gender. We, there's just so many ways we're dividing into groups. We're from different countries, those people, those people. God, we need healing from judgment. In this country and in this world, we're killing each other because they come from a different tribe or a different religion or their skin is a different color or they love someone different than us. God, we need healing from judgment. Mm -hmm. We bring that to you. We bring that and we lay this at this table. <clears throat> the place to start healing from judgment that can heal the world is in our own hearts. So God, we offer up to you today our willingness to be healed from our own judgments, one-on-one -on, -one on each other and amongst our communities in this church. And if we can do that, if we can allow you to heal that, that will spread to this community, to this city, to this state, to this country, to this world. Let it begin with us, God. And as we offer up today our grief and our compassion for those who are grieving for our two lost brothers will and steve god help us to know that they are in your arms now and whatever judgments we might have had here on this earth whatever judgments they may have faced here on this earth because i'm sure neither one of them lived the life that they would have wished that others might have wished but you know what? They are your beloved children. And now they are in your arms. And your judgment is a judgment of love. 
that you love them just as they are. You love them as you welcome them whole. And you will heal whatever it was that never got healed on this plane. They are being healed in your loving arms right now. So we ask that all of those who are grieving them, all of those who have questions and don't understand and wishes and hopes that things could have been different, that you will wrap them up in your arms of loving and that you will help them to heal. Because in you, for us, for this community and for the world, love is the healing power. And we open ourselves up to it and to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I pause for a moment. Uh, I really appreciate the message that we heard uh, today, Scott. And you know, uh, the messages that we've heard through prayers and songs and from our pastor have been disturbing to me. They have challenged me. They have left John and I often on a Sunday questioning, who am I? What's my part? What can I do? And what have I done? <laughs> I think many on that night came to the table that same way. A lot of energy, a lot of excitement, a lot of doubt, a lot of fear, a lot of confusion not knowing really what was about to happen. But as I come uh, at, with this opportunity to bring forth the bread and the cup, publicly I, I want to offer uh, to this congregation, and I suspect to others individually, one-on-one -on -one I will, an apology if I played a role with anybody in any situation that would have caused harm or that would have hindered the very work that we've been called to do. All right. And to be a part of it. Our legacy of yesterday is worth celebrating. <coughs> the hope of tomorrow is worth reaching for. But this moment as it was then, it is now difficult. So on that night, our Savior, our friend, Jesus, the Christ, he took the bread, he lifted it up, and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat, and remember me. And in the same fashion as we say, he, he took that cup, the cup that held his very life essence, that would represent and for some would transform into the very blood of Christ. He lifted it up and he, he offered it to them and he said, drink and do this in remembrance of me. I wonder as we prepare to eat and, and to drink and we remember, I wonder what that remembrance would be for us. What kind of expression that would be in our lives? Could we do as our pastor, our preacher said this morning, and as Sandy prayed for us, that we would set aside judgment and really begin to build bridges. So pray with me as we can. God, for the living sacrifice, he lived among us as an example. He shed his blood and gave his life for our redemption. The story says he was buried to carry our sins far away. And that he rose again so that we might 
be justified. I pray, God, that in these elements, that your spirit would come present with us and, and that they will become the very things they need to be for us. May your spirit of blessing fall upon them. In the many names of God, through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. In order to prepare for the serving of this feast, I ask that the ushers, acolytes, and servers come forward at this time. We want those of you who are our guests today to know that here at Founders MCC, as well as at other MCCs around the world, we celebrate an open communion. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church to receive communion here. You are welcome just as you are. In just a few moments, the ushers will guide you to come forward for communion. All are welcome.
Amen. My friends, as we go from here, as we prepare to head out into the world, may you remember that you have all you need already. You have a heart of love, and you have been given the power in order to build bridges, to look beyond all the prejudices and all the judgments of this world so that we may truly be and become a whole new people. God is at work within you and you. It is our job to go out into the world and to build those bridges, to lay that foundation, and for us to be love and hope and to bring justice as we transform lives and transform this world. May we go in peace and go with God. Amen. Amen. A couple of very quick reminders. Um, Next Sunday is our last movie series. Um, It is going to be Despicable Me. We're going to celebrate that it is the end of the season. And um, so we're encouraging you to come early. Come at 5 30, 6 o'clock, bring a potluck. We're going to have a celebration of community, and then we're going to watch the movie together. Um, So please do that. Please show up. Remember to stop down in Fellowship Hall um, so that you can actually say hello to one another as well as to the folks from Child Share. Please rise, you're able. Let us join in our closing song. Thank you for joining us today. By participating with us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry. Wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. Please connect with us and interact with us by telephone, email, or social media. Be an angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donation link. With your help, we expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. We invite you to write to us so we can be in prayer and praise with you. You are a part of Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Email us directly, info at mccla.org.